Hi, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's Advanced Synoptic Revision session. If I could ask if you could keep your uh, microphone on mute during the session and use a chat box in order to participate in the session and to ask any questions that you may have. So in tonight's session, we're going to be covering task five and task six of the assessment. I'm just going to share the task with you all now. OK, so task five, we can see here that this one's worth 12 marks in total. So it says Gemini Limited has the following information for its two profit centres and one support cost centre. You can see that we've got a list of all the different um, budgeted overheads. And then we've got some additional information. And below that, we're told that overheads are allocated or are apportioned on the most appropriate basis. The total overheads of the support department, cost centres are then reapportioned to the two profit centres. And then we're told that the stores department makes 60% of its issues to the cutting department and the remainder to the stitching department. So part A, use the following table to allocate or apportion the overheads using the appropriate basis. So first of all, you can see that we've got depreciation charge for machinery. So what we're going to do first is we're going to have a look at the basis column. Now for this one, what you want to look at is to make sure you look at this section here that you're given the additional information and the basis of apportionment will be based on the headings that were given in the table. So the basis, oops, basis of apportionment. So these headings here. So we've got a choice of the carrying value of machinery, the number of machine hours, and the floor space. So remember the first one, good Paulina. Yes, yeah, so we've got depreciation charge for machinery. So looking at the columns that we have, what are we going to use as our basis? Yes, the carrying value of machinery, good. machinery okay and then once you've got the basis so we'll, we'll, do, we'll do one one row at a time actually rather than going down the column so if we go up to the budgeted overheads we can see that the depreciate whoops wrong pen that the depreciation charge for machinery is for a hundred thousand pounds. So you would then enter that into the totals column. So we are going to apportion this between the different departments. So total hundred thousand pounds. So remember the total overhead is a hundred thousand pounds. So we said that we were going to apportion it based on the carrying value of machinery and we can see that we've got an amount for cutting and stitching so we're going to share it between those two centers so we're going to share it between cutting and stitching so what amount would we put into cutting? 
So I'll let you have a go first and then I'll go through it if there's anyone that's unsure. Yeah, so this one though, remember, remember the total overhead is a hundred thousand pounds. So we the aim is to share that hundred thousand pounds between the cutting department and the stitching department. That's it. Yes, good, Connor. Brilliant. Yeah, I can see Connor's put the workings in, in the chat box. Good, Paulina. Yes. So what you do is the one hundred thousand divided by the total amount of carrying value for the machinery times by the centre that we're looking at first. So in this instance, we would do the 100,000. Actually, I'll write it down here. So for the cutting department, we would do the 100,000 divided by the million. I'm not going to have enough space here, am I? Divided by the million. Remember, that is the total value of the carrying value of machinery times by the cutting department. So times by 650,000. Yeah, and that should give us £65,000. And that means for stitching, we've got £35,000 left to allocate to that department. So you can either do the £100,000 um, minus the £65,000, or again, what you do is the £100,000 overhead divided by the million pound of oh, the million times by the 350,000 for the stitching department. So next, um, we've got variable machine running costs. So variable machine running costs, what basis would we use here? So we've got three different basis. Which one would be more suitable? But variable machine running costs. Yeah, so this one would be machine hours, number of machine hours. Good. Number of machine hours. And then again, the next step is to find out what the total overhead is. So if we go up to the top, we can see here, variable machine running costs are 50,000 pounds. So remember, we're going to apportion it by the number of machine hours. The total overhead, 50,000 pounds. So how much would we put into cutting? Forty thousand pounds, good, brilliant. So just in case anyone's unsure, it's the 50,000 pounds overhead divided by the total number of machine hours, which is 5,000 times the machine hours for the cutting department, which is 4,000. So that gives us 40,000 pounds. So therefore, how much would we put into the stitching department? Yeah, the 10,000 pounds, yeah. 
So again, you can either apportion it by doing the 50,000 divided by 5,000 times the thousand hours in the stitching department, or for this one, because there's just the two centers, we can just um, deduct it from the total overhead. So 50,000 minus the 40,000, yeah. Um, just let me scroll up the chat box a little bit because I did see a question appear, but I'm not sure if someone else has answered it. So, Jumana, um, do you always start the calculation with a total overhead divided by the total numbers? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way that I would always do it. So the total overhead, whoops, sorry, I've scrolled the wrong way in the chat box. So the total overhead Yeah, divided by the total number of hours or meters or carrying value de depends on what basis you're using times by the basis in your your one. So, for example, with the number of hours, we know that that bill is fifty thousand pounds, the total bill, but we want to allocate it between cutting and stitching. So the total number of machine hours used were 5,000, but we need to divide the 50,000 by 5,000 to find out the amount of overhead for just one machine hour. And then we multiply it by the 4,000 machine hours which cutting department used. Is that right? And then next, we've got renting rates of premises. So I'll just scroll up to remind you. Yep, floor space, good. Yeah, so renting rates, we would use floor space. So again, we'd scroll up to find out what that total overhead is. Oops, too far. So we can see rent and rates premises is forty thousand pounds. So forty thousand pounds. So we're apportioning it by floor space. So we can see that in total. £400,000. So we need to find out the amount for one square metre and then we would times it by the cutting department to find um, the amount that we would allocate to that particular area. So what would the amount be? So remember the total overhead was £40,000. Yeah, £14,000, good. So that is £40,000 divided by 400,000 times by 140,000, good. Apologies for the scrolling. So what about for the stitching department then? Yeah, ten thousand pounds. Good. And then lastly, so we do have an amount for stores on this one. So how much would we allocate to stores? Yes, yeah, so the remaining sixteen thousand. Good. Okay, so next we've got light, heat and power for premises. So which, which basis would be more suitable? Yeah, again, floor space, good. So we'd scroll up, find out what that overhead is. So we can see light, heat and power is for £20,000. So we would enter that straight away into the total. 
So 20,000. And then we want to apportion that 20,000 pounds between the different centres. So how much would we put into cutting? Seven thousand. Good. Oh, I forgot to write floor space. And how much would we allocate to stitching? Five thousand. And then how many? How much is le left, should I say, to allocate to stars? 8,000, good. And then we've got indirect labour. Now, with indirect labour, looking at, um, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, there's always, generally anyway, there's always one that's going to be allocated. Yeah, so in this one, you can see that we're told putting 10,000, stitching is 12,000, and stars is 13,000. So this one allocated. So 10,000, 12,000 and 13,000. So that was a total of 35,000. So now we need to enter the totals. So what is the total of the cutting centre? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, really, yeah, they should be um, shaded. Yeah, um, in the answers, it does, it does have figures in those boxes. Yeah, so the total is £136,000. Okay, what about for the um, sti stitching department? Uh, I've missed a zero there, haven't I? Um, no, not unless it tells you to. If it tells you to enter a zero in any unused cells, then do. But if it doesn't specify in the question, then just leave it blank. And then lastly, well, nearly last, what about for stores? Thirty-seven thousand, yeah. And then, what's the total um, overheads? Two hundred and forty-five thousand, yeah. Now, for the reapportionment, um, we need to use this information that we have. So. Remember, it said that overheads are allocated or apportioned on the most ap appropriate basis. The total overheads of the support department cost centres are then reapportioned to the two profit centres. So we're told the stores department makes 60% of its issues to the cutting department and the remainder to the stitching department. So stores, we want to reapportion between um, cutting and stitching. So again, this box really, it should be shaded green. Um, and 
because this total we are dividing between those two centers the cutting and the stitching so 60 percent is going to cutting 40 percent is going to stitching so good connor so 37 thousand times yeah 60 percent 22,000 to 100 yeah and then 14,800 to stitching so now what would be the total overhead for um the cutting department Yes, good. Yeah, so one hundred and fifty-eight thousand two hundred. So that is our one hundred and thirty-six thousand plus our twenty-two thousand two hundred. And what about for stitching? Yeah, eighty-six eight hundred. So again, that's the seventy-two thousand plus the fourteen thousand eight hundred. And then we would just enter our 245,000 in the total overheads box. Okay, so part B. So this question is looking at fle uh, a flex budget. So Gemini Limited budgeted to manufacture 10,000 units of KL6 last month. The budgeted and actual results are shown in the table below. So complete the shaded boxes in the table to flex the fixed budget results and then calculate variances showing whether they are adverse or favourable. And we can see this part of the task is worth six marks. So first of all, oh, just before we go any further as well, just make sure you read this note at the, at the bottom. So it says materials and labour are both entirely variable whilst overheads are entirely fixed. So the first one, sales revenue, we can see for 10,000 units was £700,000. We need to flex it based on actual units sold. So actual units sold were £12,000. Good. Yes, yeah, so 840000 Good, Connor. Yeah. Yeah. So Connor's just put the workings in the chat box. Brilliant. Yeah. So it is the 700,000 divided by 10,000 units times actual units of 12,000 gives us the 840,000. So therefore, what's the variance? Ten thousand, yeah, yeah. And does everyone agree agree with that it's favourable? Yeah, yeah. So, H Hannah, you've you've said no. So be careful with this one because this is revenue. So it's money that's coming into the business. So according to budget, that's it, Vicky, the revenue was actually increased. So according to budget, we thought that we would get 840,000, but actually we've got 10,000 pounds more. We've got 850,000. So that's a good difference, a good variance. So therefore it's favorable. Yeah, just watch out whether it's um, money coming into the business or whether it's a cost. Okay, so what about um, the flex budget then for materials? Four hundred and eighty thousand, yeah. So therefore, how much is the variance? Yeah. 
3,000, yeah, and this time it is adverse because we expected it to cost us four, uh, well, we expected to spend £480,000 on materials, but actually we spent more. We spent £483,000, so 3000 more than what we planned to. So therefore it's adverse. Yeah. Okay, what about labour then? What's the flex budget for labour? Two hundred and forty thousand. Yeah. So, what's the difference? What's the variance? Four thousand. And is that favourable or adverse? Favourable. Yeah. Good. Yeah, because we expected it to cost. £240,000 labour, but actually we only spent £236,000, so we spent less than what we expected, so it's favourable. Okay, overheads then, what amounts would we put in? Good, I'm glad you've all put that. Good. Yeah, because um, sometimes when we mark work from students, they'll um, also flex this one but just remember this note wherever it's gone it was underneath wasn't it um, it's telling us that overheads are fixed so therefore they remain the same as budgeted yes yeah, so it's two thousand pounds variance and yeah it's adverse because we expected them the costs or the overheads to be thirty thousand pounds but they were actually two thousand pounds more good so back to our flex budget column, what would the profit figure be? 90,000, good, so that's the sales revenue minus all the costs. So what would the total variance amount be? Nine thousand. And would that total variance, would it be um, favourable or would it be adverse? Yeah, favourable, good. Sorry, I'm just moving the chat box. Yeah, so we expected to get £90,000 profit but we actually got 99,000. So therefore we've got 9,000 pounds more, so it's favorable. Okay, so moving on to task six, whoops. So this one's worth a total of 13 marks. So you've been provided with the following information about a partnership. The partners are Bonnie and Clyde and have a financial year end of the 30th of April. They have been in partnership for a number of years and you have been provided with the following information. So profit for the year ending 30th of April 2015 is 187,000. And then you can see we've got some information. So we're told the, what the profit share is, um, salaries, interest on capital, drawings, interest on drawings. Then it says to complete the partnership appropriation account for the year ended 30th of April, taking into account the information provided above. Now it says to round your answers to the nearest whole number. Remember in a question, if it specifies a rounding instruction, you must ensure that you follow it. And it says there does not need to be an entry in every space. So don't go putting zeros in any unused boxes here. So profit for year. What would we enter? £187,000. Yep. Yeah.
it's all right. Okay, what would we add in? Good, Louisa, yes. So we would need to add in the interest on drawings. Good. And we can see here the table, we've got the interest on drawings. So remember, this is a charge that the business um, puts on each of the um, partners for withdrawing money out. So Bonnie's is £270, Clyde's is 190 So add interest on drawings. Um, 270 and then that was 190 so the total that we need to add on is 460 pounds now what would we need to deduct salaries yeah and we can see bonnie gets a salary of 7,000, Clyde 7,500. Good, yeah. I'll just write the figures in first before I forget what they are. Yeah, and then minus the interest on capital, good. Um, so this is salaries. Yeah, interest on capital. Interest on capital. So interest on capital, 500 for Bonnie, 430 for Clyde. Ah, oh, written it on the wrong. 500 and 430. Um, generally, Paulina, you would always do salaries and then interest on capital. Um, so is, is there anything else that we need to include here? Do we need to deduct anything else? Yeah, so the profit shares, what we'll calculate next. Yeah. So what is the total amount then that we need to deduct? So we know we need to add on 460. So we need to deduct the 14,500 plus 930. That's 15,000. 430. So how much profit is available um, to distribute between the two partners? Oh, but wrong, wrong figure in my calculator. Plus 460. Yes, good. Yep. Yeah. So 172,030, yeah. So it is the 187,000 plus the 460 minus the 15,430. And that gives 172,030 in order to share between the two partners. So remember, we've got Bonnie at 100. and Clyde. Good, Louisa. Yes, it was a 70-30 split, wasn't it, we were told. So 70%, 30%. So how much will um, Bonnie receive? Mm hmm good. And Clyde, how much will he receive? 
Good. 51,609. Yeah. Good. So then the total, so when you total them to up, it should balance back to the profit available for distribution. So the second part of the question, we've got a partner's current account and we need to, to um, put the information from the appropriation account into here. Now, remember, if you were to receive um, a capital account, a partner's capital account, remember the only things that you would see in there would be um, any capital that the partner has invested into the business and any goodwill. Whereas the partner's current account will contain anything that the business owes to the partner. Good, yes, yeah. Yeah, so we would need to debit it with drawings, good. Because it would reduce the amount that the business owed the partners, good. So first of all, remember, before we before we enter um, interest on capital, we'll do it in the same order as what we've done the appropriation account. So we'll do the salaries first. <laughs> yeah, I think it was seven thousand and seven thousand five hundred. Yeah. So remember, anything that is owed to the partner that they're entitled to will go into the credit side of the business because essentially it's increasing the liability for the business. Anything that reduces the amount that that partner gets, so a few of you have put about drawings, that they would be entered onto the debit side of the account. Good. Yes, yeah, so interest on capital. Um, five hundred and four thirty. Yeah, and their share of the profit. Yeah, the profit share. Yeah, one twenty four two one, and then fifty one six zero nine. Yeah, so then we've got on the debit side, so we've done salaries, we've dealt with the interest on capital, we've also done their profit share, but we need to do the interest on drawings. Yeah, so the interest on drawings you do include in the current account, it's drawings themselves that are never included within the appropriation account, but interest on drawings are. Yeah, so you need to debit interest on drawings in the current account and debit drawings. Good, Sasha. Yeah, so we'll, we'll put interest on drawings first. So interest on drawings. So 270.190. And then drawings. Just remember drawings are never included within the appropriation account, only the current account. Yeah, that's that's right, Rebecca. So twenty seven thousand and nineteen thousand. Okay, so then we need to balance off the account. So what would the total be for Bonnie? What would be the total figure that's entered onto both sides of the account? Yeah, good, yeah. So 
So we know that the credit side is higher than the debit side. So we're going to have a balance carried down for Bonnie on the credit side. So how much will that balance carry down be? Good. Yeah, so it'll be that total amount less the 270, less the 27,000, which gives 119,000 pounds, 151. Okay, what will the total figure be for Clyde then? Good. 73,739 pounds. And again, the credit side was higher, so the balance carried down is going to be on the debit side. Good. Yeah, so that gives um, a balance carried down of £54,549. Brilliant. Well done. Okay, so... The six, six, the six tasks in the exam in total, Rachel. Okay, so thank you ever so much. Thank you for your participation over the last four sessions. I wish you the best of luck in your exam. I hope it all goes well for you. Um, remember, you will receive the recording. It'll probably be emailed out to you tomorrow. Any questions that you have at all? please feel free to contact us on atrevision at fi.co.uk. And as always, I'll stop the recording now, but I, I, I will stay on. So any of you that have any questions, I have seen a couple of questions pop up in, in the chat box. Uh, I will stay on in order to answer them for you. So thank you very much. Best of luck in your exam, and I hope to see you all again soon.